God damn it. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. It's good to be back. It's been a few weeks uh, since I've done the old party, party the podcast. Um, so happy to have my guest this week. This is the second time she's been on the podcast. I think she was on my first year I was doing this. Um, she's a great artist. She's a great illustrator. Um, I've been seeing her work since I was a young lad early on when I was getting started in illustration. And she's just always just been there. I, I remember seeing her stuff on illustration um, annuals when I didn't even know what that was yet. Um, so she's an awesome artist and I'm so happy to have her on for the second time. We're going to get into some really fun topics later on, I think. Um, but for now, everyone, please welcome the one and only Anita Kuntz. so much i've always been around i'm like a rash that won't go away <laughs> you've always been there no it's funny though i do remember like um like when i was first getting started in illustration i was um working at the time for a magazine doing graphic design um, which i hated so much um i didn't even go to school for it they just hired me because they knew i was an artist and they they were teaching me how to do it and so i'm talking way back with like cork express and you know, Photoshop didn't even have layers yet, um, but they would get these annual like illustration directory books and all these different things. And I remember um, I would all the artists that I thought, oh, this is this is what I want to do. I would tear out the pages, you know, so like you, CF Payne, Roberto Prada, like on and on and on. Uh, Fred Harper. I mean, so many artists that are all like my friends now, which is just f weird for me. But I my. Um, my studio looked like a serial serial killer lair. So I, I had like just all of the artwork just taped to my wall and then little like post-it notes with like like pointing towards certain things like like really good hands or you know whatever it was. And that's how I taught myself. So <laughs> so it does go way back. So <laughs> it goes way you can hear me okay, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I can hear. No, it goes way back for me, too. I mean, I've always wanted to be an illustrator. I can't remember what we talked about last time, but uh, my uncle was an illustrator. So that's where I got the idea. You know, I, I really never wanted to be anything else. And then so I went to art school here, Ontario College of Art. And then afterward, I went to the illust what was it called then the illustrators workshop. Mm. Right. So I had for, a for a teacher, I had Bernie Fuchs, I had Mark English. We had Alan Kober. So this is when I was like 20. Um, who, who, oh, now I'm forgetting. Um, uh, oh, see, this is when you get old, this is what happens. But I mean, <laughs> the teachers were so amazing and they all had completely different styles. And um, I just got it. I just got like a real crash course in illustration. And that was, you know, coming from, I'm Canadian, I'm from a small town just being sort of upstate New York and just being in this like illustration world, like just, you know, it would just, it just kind of, uh, after that, that, that was it for me. <laughs> yeah. It was over for me. That's all I wanted to do after that. Yeah. It's funny how that works. I mean, I, I remember my, uh, my dad's an artist and he, so I, I grew up around art my whole life and uh, it just, it was just, normal like you know you probably, I probably thought like everybody's dad does this or something but like I just grew up and my dad was a wildlife artist so we always had like um there's like dead animals all over the place or my dad would like you know shoot ducks and he would stuff them and then he would draw and paint from them and so it was like it was an interesting way to grow up but I just I, all I ever did was draw I didn't had nothing else that I wanted to do or that I cared about doing and I didn't know even what illustration was you know like I, I think I kind of fell into it accidentally because, you know, all I knew is I wanted to be an artist, but I had no direction, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I think um, I just, you know, I just kind of 
I think what it was is I, I was always good at caricature. And I started and I started realizing when I was in my like I was about 20 years old, I started seeing caricature in magazines and stuff. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's what I could do. So that's kind of like how I I just started, you know, you know, let's see, if, let's see what I can do. And, and um, you know, it, obviously it doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> it's, interesting. it's interesting that you wanted to be a caricature artist early on. Yeah. I mean, I think that's interesting because I had a couple false starts, you know, like I, I thought, well, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought, well, I knew, I know I want to draw. I know I, I like print because I saw my uncle do it. Um, but, but I, I really didn't know. And I, th I actually think it's important for young artists to know that you don't, you know, you can, you can change your mind a lot, yeah. you know, like I, I wanted, I thought, well, I guess I'll be a children's book illustrator because I didn't know what else. And then later I was doing, because I was doing kind of a children's book style, I started getting work in advertising and that was great. Yeah. Um, but then I, but then I sort of got tired of drawing little things that were too cutesy. I wanted to do more serious stuff. Mm. So I sort of meandered all over the place, not knowing what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know? I still, I kind of still feel I'm like that, you know, See, like, that's funny. Like, say so for me, I had, I didn't have any direction. Um, I was like self-taught and I was doing caricature for myself. Like I, I, I had been drawing caricature since I was like nine or 10 years old. Um, and you know, I, ne but I, I knew I wanted to be an artist to make a living as an artist, but I didn't know what to do, you know, or how I could, like, I remember my dad was like, you know, he, he was worried about me, you know, being a starving artist and all that. Cause that's kind of, we grew up that way a little bit. And, um, I remember he would like hand me fashion magazines and he's like, maybe you could be a fashion designer. And he was trying to think of things that could make money as an artist. And I'm like, I don't want to be a fashion designer. So I had no idea what it was I wanted to do, but it was just one of those things where, you know, I started seeing, I started recognizing caricature in publications and thinking, Oh, that's one of the things I love to do the most, you know? So that's kind of how I got into it. <laughs> so, so you were looking, you were looking at magazines. So who, so you liked like Chris Payne and Sebastian Kruger and yeah. Kruger, like um, uh, Daniel Dell. Oh, um, okay. yeah, well, well, see, it, it really goes back to mad magazine because, um, I was a huge fan of mad, um, ever since I was a little kid and I would just collect them and I had my favorite covers that I would, you know, and so I started getting to know the names that way. And then, and then when I got older, I started realizing, wait, a lot of these artists, I just thought of them as mad magazine artists. I didn't realize that, oh no, Chris Payne is like in all of these magazines, all these books, all this stuff. Um, so that was when I was about 20 that I started like, like, oh, wow, they, this is actually something because I, I really wanted to work for Mad Magazine. That was like my dream when I was a kid. Um, so but it, it kind of just fell into place, you know, because, you know, I just started drawing as much as I could and then submitting and it just eventually happened, <laughs> you, you know. Were so you so you were submitting to contests or to or you were no, doing just to work to magazines yeah i was i was um yeah i'm curious how you got started with that too because i um i didn't know what i was doing and i believed in my work enough and i think it's funny now looking back at it but i would put together um like a packet of like maybe 10 of my drawings and at the time i was only doing drawings i wasn't painting really early on and I would just mail them to time magazine. <laughs> I'd mail them to all these like, you know, originals? And I, originals? No, no, just like oh. a, like a packet. <laughs> no, like I, I made like a packet that I would like print off at Kinko's yeah. um, with a little bio and then it would show like, and, um, and I never gotten heard anything back. Um, and, you know, I've said this so many times, so I'll just go through real quick, but basically what I ended up doing was, I ended up um, seeing really terrible magazines and publications um, at Barnes and Nobles or Borders that were just, you know, really generic, mostly black and white. But then I noticed they had artwork. And so I started sending my stuff to those publications because I figured I'm better than anything in these. And I'm sure, you know, they're, they're, I've never even heard of this publication. So I kind of just thought that might be a good idea and it worked. So I started getting my first publication um, jobs where I barely, I didn't really even get paid hardly. It was like really bad, but I was getting covers and I was getting spot illustrations. 
And then, and then after a few years of that, that's when I started getting notified, you know, bigger publications started to notice me. And then it was just, you know, kind of like baby steps, you know, it didn't just all of a sudden, but I mean, did you have a similar, um, I think it's really, really important for, for young artists to know that, to know that it doesn't just happen, you know, Mm -hmm like that one of the things i'm going to show some work and and uh one of the things i think people don't talk enough about is rejection i mean so what you did is you you know you sent stuff in you were rejected i was rejected all the time at the beginning i still am rejected all the time (laughs) you know yeah you know so what what concerns me is is young people who you know they they'll try something they'll try something for a week or two oh i didn't get anything and and that's it no it can take it can take years i mean i was like yeah. you know, I, I was doing a lot of local stuff like when i first started i was doing like oh what was i was doing like um fishing lure packaging where oh. i do fish like i was I was doing um, whatever you could get, what? right? Yeah, I yeah. Was thrilled that I could that I could make a living just from doing a drawing, no matter how. I re- I remember one time I I stayed up all night doing um, pointillism. I did pointillism for a while. Doing oh a man! Parade, and it was a bunch of mosquitoes coming toward you. I spent two oh, a weekend doing that, <laughs> just about losing my mind. But yeah. that the alternative, like I what you know, the alternative was just not, I was just going to do it. I was determined. And I think it's that determination almost more than anything that determines success. Don't you think? Oh yeah. You, you know what you just said? I relate to that a lot too. Cause there, for me, there was nothing else. Like what, what else was I going to do? Like, it's the only thing I love. It's my passion. And I know I'm meant to do it, Yeah. but so there, the, the, the thing that I, I think about a lot is I think struggle is one of the most important things that, you know, you, I think people should embrace struggle a little bit more because you, you cannot become successful at something without struggle. And what you're talking about is like, you know, um, you know, a lot of people just give up or, you know, they, after trying a little bit, like I, I've been, um, I've been doing stand up now f- comedy for three years or almost three years. And I can honestly say it's one of the hardest things that I've ever done. It's so challenging. Um, every time I get on stage, it's nerve wracking, but then you you push through it. And you're the only way that you can actually succeed in something like that is by doing it over and over and over again. And you're going to fail. You are going to, uh, you're going to, you're going to think something is clever and funny and smart and nobody laughs. And then you feel depressed and then you get up and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. And you know, otherwise you, you quit and you can't, you know what I mean? Like there's no success without the struggle. Like you, you just not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes I, it's so yeah. painful. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to tell you, I mean, it's one thing to fail by myself in my studio, you know, I can sort of lick my wounds here, but in public, like if you're like, I, I still, find yeah. it, I still find it really hard just to talk about my work to an audience. Like I, it, yeah. I think it's not what I do. So I can't imagine, you know, you, what, if you have a couple grouchy people in the audience or people who just want, I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> Talk about bearing your soul. Like it's hard enough if you're sitting in the studio by yeah. yourself, right? No, it it is. It is um it is a crazy feeling, but when when it works, um, it is the best feeling. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. And so, but, it's, but it's so interesting that you're saying, you know, even when it's difficult, you 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 dust yourself off and you go back, no, no matter how difficult it is. Yeah. And I, you know, and I can say that like just just doing like talks in front of audiences and, and stuff. It doesn't get any better. Like I still get super nervous the night before. I'm like, my heart goes like this. It's like, what? I've been doing this for years. You know, it's like, yeah. when is it going to get better? I don't know. Anyway. No, it's it's true. And that and the same thing is like the one of the things I like about doing comedy is that it I, I think that it it's so similar to what I've been doing with my art. Um, oh. and, and I don't mean the, the humor part. I just mean like, you know, being an artist, you, you are putting yourself out there and, and, it, and it is, it's, it's painful because it's so personal. Um, and like I said before, you cannot get better without struggle. And so there, there's constant, uh, like mental wars, I think that we face, like, I, I, even though I've been doing this professionally now for 20 years, um, I, there's every single painting I do there's a point in the painting where I'm like, 
this is so bad. <laughs> this, this is not, this sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> and, but I have, I've been doing it for long enough that I know like, no, it, it just, you just keep going. Yeah. It's going to end up great. You just have to push through it yeah. and you have to get it to a certain point where like, oh, and then all of a sudden things start to click and you're like, okay, okay, okay. But, yeah. but, but don't you also find that sometimes like you're working on something and it looks like the worst thing in the world and it's like, that's it. I'm, I'm done. And then you go away yeah. you look at it tomorrow or the next day. Yeah. It's about that and if you look at it from fresh eyes like I, th I think that's that's what that's what I notice with students sometimes you know they're just they're agonizing over it and sometimes I just say you know what go for a walk come you know get it out of yeah. your head the come art back. fairies show up and fix it when you're gone <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> but it's, it's it's um you know most of us are our own worst critics right and oh, yeah. sometimes you know and sometimes you make a huge mistake and it, it ends up being whoa it ends up being transformative like you can actually learn something from it and maybe use it again. You know what you yeah. do. Maybe that's something that becomes, you know, something more interesting now that you can continue to use. So, yeah. So it's, there's, it's always a real journey, isn't it? Yeah. And I, f I also find that like, just, you know, the, lo the longest that I've been, you know, let's see. It's, it, I feel like the more I grow the the more I the, the more years I add on as an artist, the not the harder it becomes, but like it's like I know way more now than when I did before. So there's I, I I'm I think I'm a little bit slower. I'm like I don't know. It's hard to explain. Like sometimes you you have no choice. You have to you have to pump something out. But yeah. now now it's like I look back at older pieces and I'm like oh there's so much that I would not do like that anymore. Yeah. But but those I was almost like more careless then where I was just like, I'm just drawing and painting, whatever. Um, and so now it's like, I think there's just, it's almost like an information overload sometimes when I work, I feel like, 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 wow, man, this is taking way longer than it should. But that's because I keep noticing I, every time I come back to it and it's like, oh, well, look at that edge. Oh, look at this. You know, you're always adjusting, always changing things. But um. I don't know. I find that like, it's not that painting has become more difficult. I think I just, I just know so much more and it, it slows me down now, <laughs> especially when I'm working like with oils or something. Oh boy. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. That that's, I don't understand like Tim O'Brien and some of those guys that um, can paint oils that fast. I don't know. I really don't know. And then if you look at a Tim O'Brien original, it's perfect. It's exquisite. Mm -hmm. down like if you even if you look at it it's like I, I really don't know how he does it he, he's got some some crazy technique that he can do really quickly I, I really don't know but I don't I, understand I, it either of doing it but I, I still like I like I'm doing most of my publication stuff digitally and I it probably takes him just as long as it does when I, and I'm doing a digital painting you know I don't know <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I really, I don't know. Like, I remember um, Mark English going to his studio and he, like, he always had, he had like so many colors already pre-mixed. Maybe that's what, you know, like, I, who knows? I don't know what the, what the tricks are, or he's just been doing it so long that he automatically, yeah. okay, here's this skin color. Here's this skin, you know, here's this, this is what, you know, um, so I don't know, beats me. I'd love to see yeah. a demo. I, I've never, yeah. that, like, I don't know how he would do it anyway. Yeah, I've always, I've, I've I've wondered because, like I know, like I I've uh you know joked around with the the art director for Time Magazine, and uh, because you know, I've, I've done a few covers for them now where, I I get like, usually like maybe five days or so. Sometimes sometimes it's been less than that, and I I asked him one time I was like, is this the same amount of time you give Tim O'Brien? Because I'm just. I, I assume Tim O'Brien probably has to have a few weeks. And he's like, oh, no, yeah, he pumps. And, and um, I think I talked with Tim once uh, not that long ago about one of his things. And he, because he, I think he posted that this was an all an over all nighter or whatever, something like that. And I wrote him, like, are you saying you painted that all in one night? And he was like, yep. I'm like, what? I know. No, dude, that's yeah. crazy. I don't understand that. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, CF Payne, same thing. Um, I've had talks with him about that or back in the day, he would tell me, I'm sure you can relate to this, um, but you, you always were in New York, right? In that area. 
No, I mean, I, I've, I've always been in Toronto, but I had a, I had a place in New York and I used to spend oh, okay. the time there. But yeah, because Chris told me once that back in the day, he he was like in Ohio. Right. I think he's still in Ohio. But um, he, you know, he would have to, you know, do this painting and then he would have to quickly run it to FedEx. Yeah. <laughs> and they would FedEx the painting um, to New York um, and then he would, you know, the, 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 then there was corrections sometimes and he would have to like make a trip to New York or something or just yeah. great stuff that doesn't even, like, I, I don't even understand how anyone got anything done. Yeah, I, I had to, um, that happened, that used to happen all the time. I, I did something for a Sports Illustrated cover once and it was Mike Tyson. And, um, you know, the usual, I, you know, back then there was no, I mean, you know, there, there was no, that was even before FedEx. Oh my goodness, I'm dating myself. That was even <laughs> And I remember doing the painting and it was, you know, I used to work small because there was no time. Um, taking it to the airport, you know, and they sent it and then phew. Then the art director calls and says, You've got to change this. He's grown a beard. So they they flew someone up here. Oh my gosh. I was waiting with my brush and I and I just painted the little, you know, and that was before any, you know, before the internet. Like, you know, you just had to make do, right? So I painted the little goatee or whatever it was. And they and they so you know, the guy stood here while I did it, and then he took the next flight back. But it was crazy like that. That is, that is it really was crazy. I can't imagine. I mean, I still get shocked sometimes. Well, I, I wouldn't say shocked about deadlines um but i guess i'm surprised sometimes like um like i did one piece for rolling stone where they called me on a thursday night yeah it was okay it was thursday like late thursday night and um asked me if i could do a painting that's due friday by five o'clock on friday yeah then I, I was not going to turn it down. I'm like, okay, whatever. And it was just a portrait. I'm like, I can do a portrait yeah, uh, in that amount of time. But I got up at like five in the morning <laughs> and I just worked straight from five in the morning till five. And, and it was just, it was just a crazy marathon. Yeah. And then the next week, yeah. um, well, in a few days, it was on newsstands already. And it's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. it's so crazy. surreal. That's for, so time um, for time covers, they used to call Wednesday around supper time. And then if they call, it's like, oh my God, you know, so you just drop everything. Yeah. And, then, and then you start with the sketches and then the editors would have approved it by 10 or 11. And then you start painting and then you paint mm -hmm. all night. And the next day at five, the courier's here. So if that's Thursday at five, the courier's here. Courier takes it to New York, but their schedule is, so the courier takes it to New York. It has to be at the printers on Friday so that it's on international newsstands by Monday. You know, so you really, that's it. You can't mess around with that deadline. That is, yeah. you miss, even, even if the guy misses his flight or something. I mean, it's, it's, everything is all lined up. If one, you know, domino falls, it doesn't work. So, but it's, I, it's not, I don't know. I, now there's, it's a lot easier now, I think with the internet. I mean, oh yeah. No, yeah. it's, it's way, but I've experienced weird things with the internet technology and everything. Um, like just the, the, like, you know, I've, I've like one time I did a cover for the wall street journal and it was my first job for them. And I was really excited and I spent, it was like a really short, like day and a half deadline. And I, I pulled an all nighter to, to get it done on time. It was due by the like six in the morning or something. And so um, that night before I started my all night <laughs> adventure, I sent them a, the sketch that was just lightly blocked in. Um, there was four characters and they're all blocked in. And then, um, I said, so I sent that at like maybe nine o'clock at night. And then I spent all night just killing myself to get this painting finished. And by six in the morning, I was very proud of myself. I was like, oh, this is, this turned out great. And I'm like dead tired. And I just, I sent it to him and I went to bed. And then um, I remember um, that, that in, I think the next day it came out because I went to Milwaukee to visit my dad. Um, my dad was a teacher and he brought a bunch of kids to see Alice in Wonderland. And I had worked on that movie. So I was going to meet them and it was going to be like this cool thing. I could talk to his students. And so we stop and I see the Wall Street Journal's out and I go to pick it up and I'm all excited and my, with my dad. And I, I'm like freaking out because they used my sketch. They used, 
kidding. Yeah, so they that's what I'm saying about the problem sometimes with the emails and stuff. They I spent all night killing myself on this thing, and they used the sketch I sent to show them my progress at like nine o'clock at night the night before. <laughs> Wait, was it a mistake or did yeah. they really like it? No, oh. they just used the wrong file. Oh my god. And it was a JPEG, so it wasn't even good quality. Oh my God. It was just, and it was a crude sketch um, with just a little bit of block in. Yeah, it yeah, looked, yeah. It looked like garbage. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And like, that's on the cover with my oh, name. Was it, was it really terrible, or do you think it was terrible? It could have looked just like a loose painting, you know? Oh, I thought it was garbage. Okay. I was so embarrassed and so upset. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I, I'm, I was with Sorry uh at the time yeah and um i called her and i was so angry and and then uh she told me she goes yeah, i just i just uh called them and yelled at at them for it and they, they say that they're sorry but yeah. i'm just like that's too late wow i i just thought this is i'm never gonna work again like this all ever all the art directors are gonna see this and they're gonna think who is this terrible artist <laughs> sorry, sorry my cat's about to oh, oh it's all right Sorry, that's not very professional. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that was a terrible experience, though. But um, anyway, has anything ever like that happened to you? Where well, I, you know, you just you're just reminding me now of the <laughs> kind of the good old days. Oh my god! But um, the thing the thing about all nighters that I remember is that you know you you're going you're going you know you're you're trying not to freak out too much. You know, you got I got lots of time, lots of time. But then you start getting really tired, and around yeah. Two, Clock, you start to hallucinate a little you know you're just like yeah. oh, this doesn't look like the person anymore or, you know and you start second guessing yourself and yeah uh, but i've i've woken up in the next morning and i've put six fingers on a hand or you know oh my like, god really hard but you know or the sky somehow is green and you could have sworn you painted it blue but you know you're just your mind playing tricks oh man yeah yeah they're like interesting creative choice there you're like oh yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. oh man i i did one time i did a um I, I painted tiger woods for sports illustrated and um it was a really cool piece it was from the golf ball's perspective so it's like look you're at a golf ball and you're looking up at tiger right and um i was really proud of that and i thought it was a cool idea and everything and i um same thing sort of happened with email but this time it was my fault um i hadn't backed anything up Oh, and no. and um, I shrunk the image down. They wanted to see a work in progress, and it was due the next day. And so I shrunk it down, and I asked, and I, I I sent it to them, you know, as a JPEG. And then when I went to open the file up again to continue working on the painting, I accidentally saved it as a small JPEG. Oh no! Yeah, like so, seventy-two DPI or something. Yeah. So my 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 it's painting up. that I've been working on all these details looked like like super mario brothers like pixelated terrible yeah and i almost had a heart did, attack did you could you did you fix it were you able to fix it <sighs> yeah i didn't tell them anything um i what i did was i blew it back up to 300 something uh dpi and it just looked like garbage and i started all over again i started painting on top of it i used everything as like my base tones and I just had to repaint four faces, oh boy. four bodies, everything, all in one night. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. this says I'm running out of time. Oh. Which is really weird because, um, that's never happened to me before. I've I've had like two hour podcasts before. Okay. Um. Anyways, that's fine because um, we are I, we're gonna. I hope we're not scaring anyone away from the business. There's really. Oh, good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got 10 more minutes on on this 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 part but uh um yeah we can we can uh, oh shoot sorry um but yeah i i I'm, that's, that's really weird about the zoom thing but but anyways um those kind of things though those kind of stories i think are important for people to hear because you know <laughs> I mean, from I'm, I'm sure you've experienced this though. Like people see your work, they see their published work, and they're like, "Oh, you're Anita Kuntz, and you're doing this amazing work and everything else." But I think it's important for people to know that 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 it's not always, you know, it. it, it again, back to the struggle thing. Like, um, 
it's not always just amazing. Like, you know, the it's, I think it's great seeing the work published. I still get excited when I, when I, when I get published work, but the process and everything, and you know, uh, there's days where you don't feel well yeah. and you have to still paint. Yeah. And, and, oh yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. yeah. So if any of this scares people, I, this is what I was going to say. If, if any of this does scare you, you don't, you don't belong here. I guess so. You know, but it is. It's, it's not for you. <laughs> one thing I realized is that, you know, for example, the, the time stuff, it's a little bit of an adrenaline rush, don't you think? Like it is. Oh, yeah. It is, it is like, okay. You know, and you just, you just kind of cancel your life for two days because you know you have to do this and you just really concentrate. And, and just that's kind of what it's all about. Because, you know, again, if you, you know, they can't run a blank page, I mean, you have a responsibility to do it. So, yeah. It really is all about sort of professionalism and um, and definitely tenacity. You know, how badly do you want it? Do you really want to do it? Are you willing to work all night for something? I was because I really wanted it. I really love to do yeah. it. It didn't bother. It didn't bother me that much. You know. Oh yeah. So um, you know, it's like how how badly do you want to do it? It's not going to come yeah. to you. You really have to work for it. It's like that. I think it's like that anywhere with the arts in any mm -hmm. of the. Like it, there's nothing easy about being in the arts, but it's but it's an amazing field to be in, I think. Yeah. The, yeah the, it, you, you, know. you you have to you have to have um that passion, that drive. Absolutely. Um, and you have to be willing to, you know, get back up after you get knocked down because that is what it's like. Absolutely. It is, you know, but, you know I, and the, the crazy thing is is I, I didn't know I had it like when I was young. You know, when I think about it now, um, you know, all the rejection I had and all that kind of stuff, I kept going like where did this like I didn't realize I was so stubborn you know <laughs> where yeah. did that come from um and you know but I wanted to be just like my uncle and you know it's funny that we were talking about the whole natural you know like the animals and everything like he lived on a lake and I loved that life like I always wanted a studio on a lake you know yeah so, so um yeah I, I just wanted to be just like him of course later I learned that they were always in financial trouble and you know you only get this yeah. you know so later few you know, thank, thank goodness I didn't know that then. But uh, so I, I was always a little, bit, a little bit naive about it. But, you know, you just you do what you want to do. If you want to yeah. do it, you'll do it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a really great way to wrap up this uh, this okay. podcast, because just so everybody knows, um, the, the story doesn't end here. Anita and I are going to continue on um, and, and she's actually going to start to share some of her work. And we're going to go through and talk about process and different things and um, and she said earlier rejection. Um, so I think she's going to show some pieces having to do with that. Um, so um, if everybody uh, wants to jump on over, please support the, uh, the podcast on my Patreon. Um, it, uh, it helps feed the babies. And, um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, so everyone, please do that. Um, and uh, real quick before you go, can you let people know where they can find you um, on socials oh. and all that? Oh, okay. Um, Instagram is is the A is Anita Kunz. A N I T A K U N Z, <laughs> all one word. Okay. Um, at at Anita Kunz. Okay. And then other than that, you guys can Google it. I mean, Google. All right. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.